Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross.
praise in this place. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. Glory. Hallelujah. Scripture says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many believe he's worthy? I said, how many know that he's worthy? He's worthy. Hallelujah. And not only is he worthy, look at your neighbor and tell him he's able. Whatever you need in your life, oh, you got to say it like you mean it. If you know that you know that you know that he's able to do exceeding abundantly, look at your other neighbor and tell him he's able. He's able. Hallelujah. Now, witness back to him and tell him, yes, he is. Oh, I wish I had a church in this place. Say, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. You got to know that within yourself. No matter what the circumstance looks like. Hallelujah. Exceedingly and abundantly above all. All you could ask or be according to the power that worketh in you, you. You see, God is able to do just what he Oh, 
sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Make it personal. Make it personal. 
know he's the great I am. Whatever you need him to be, that's who you are to me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is he a miracle worker? Is he a promise keeper? Is he your light in darkness? Then give him some praise. We're in celebration today. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we're sure enough glad in it. Do I have any glad people in the house this morning? Come on and celebrate the King of Kings. anniversary, but we need to rejoice and celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For if it was not for God, we wouldn't have our pastor and first lady. In fact, we wouldn't even have breath in our bodies to celebrate his name. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout! Shout! Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. We're celebrating. We're celebrating. Yes, we're in celebration of life. And they're living. They're not stretched out before us. You know, we don't call them funerals anymore for saints. We call it a celebration of life. But they're not dead. They're still alive. And with every breath in our body, we need to thank God. We need to thank God. We need to thank God for their life and for your life. Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? Then come on and give God some praise one more time. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel his presence. I don't know about you, but I feel his presence. Hallelujah. Let everything, let everything, let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. That's Bible. That's Bible. That's Bible. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I guess I just have to praise him all by myself. And finish it over there at 1129. Dr. James Scott plays. Hallelujah. 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 God's been good to, too good to me. Hallelujah. I can't tell it all. But I thank him. I thank him for life today. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you today in celebrating with us. Those of you who are on Facebook, whether you're on Facebook or the internet and YouTube or whatever social media that you're on, we say welcome to Living Faith Temple and our services. We trust that you have enjoyed the Lord thus far. We see some unfamiliar faces as well as familiar faces that we haven't seen in a long time. We welcome you and thank God for you. Well, it's time for the word of God. But before we do, we have a few announcements that we want to share. And I have about three of them and they're all from Pleasant Green Baptist Church. Sister to Sister Women's Bible Study will be held on October the 7th at 6 p.m. So please join the women of Pleasant Green for Bible study as we journey into the Word of God regarding life, daily concerns, choices, obstacles, and joys. There is so much power in women joining in relationship with one another to strengthen and support each other. We are seeking to experience the Spirit of God resting in this place and pouring out his desire for our purpose in this season. This will be a relaxing, sharing, and caring setting. 
Can't wait to see you there. This will be led by First Lady, Minister Veronica Neely. If you need additional information, you may contact Pleasant Green Baptist Church and their telephone number will be posted on the bulletin board as we will ask the ushers to post this as well. Join us for a Hands and Hearts Community Outdoor event on October the 16th from 12 p.m. until 1 p.m. on the corner of 15th and Waller Street, Pleasant Green Baptist Church. All persons are welcome to participate in this community event. The women's ministry will be presenting a one hour of power event, Hands and Hearts, as an outreach to provide a meal and conversation with people within the community. Please come by and pick up a prepackaged lunch. Again, their telephone number will be posted as well as this announcement. Trunk and Treat on Saturday, October the 16th at Pleasant Green Baptist Church. Community Children Trunk and Treat will be held at 4 p.m. in the church's parking lot. Due to COVID-19, the Trunk and Treat will be different this year. Car trunks will not be used at this time. Pre-packaged treat bags will be passed out in a to-go fashion in two ways. There will be a drive-through for those with cars through the alley behind the church. And then there will be a walk-through for those who are on foot. Go to the gravel parking lot across the street from the church. Those who wish to donate, members and non-members, please drop off donations at Pleasant Green Baptist Church as soon as you can, but no later than Sunday, October the 10th at 3 p.m. Volunteers are needed to assist with social distancing. Thank you in advance, Sister Julie Beckwith. And again, this will be posted as well. We ask that you keep those announcements in mind. Yes, sir. Amen. God is a healer. He's a deliverer. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. We will definitely keep them in our prayers. Well, we heard good teaching of the word on last night, did we not? From our elder Jack Bendoff. Uh-huh. He made it real plain for us, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had some beans and cornbread last night. That was some good eating. And so we're here this morning ready to receive some more spiritual food that is heaven sent. Can you smell that? Take a sniff. You smell that? I smell something in the oven. And it smells like fresh bread. I'm not talking about natural bread, but I'm talking about the bread of life that will give you life and that more abundantly. Take a big whiff. I, I, I smell it. I, 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 I smell, can you smell it? Take your spiritual mask off and take a deep whiff. You smell it? Oh, it smells mighty, mighty, mighty good. And it's about ready to be served. All right, all right, all right. Well, our speaker this morning is no stranger to us. And he's a preacher and a teacher in his own right. But just in case some of you do not know who he is, I've been given his bio to share with you before he comes. Pastor David Elsie Norman is a lifetime member of the Greater Bethlehem Church of Cincinnati, Ohio, where his grandfather, the late Bishop Elsie W. Young, former presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith, served faithfully as pastor until his passing. He is the son of the late Bishop Walter A. Jones, Jr. and Mother Ruth E. Jones, founders of the Greater Bethlehem Temple Church of Columbus, Ohio. Pastor Norman is a fourth generation preacher 
of the Apostles' Doctrine. He was called into the ministry in 1994, and in 1996, he was ordained as an elder by the late Bishop Stanley Halton, former presiding bishop of the true churches of the apostolic faith. In, in 2000, he was promoted to district elder of the eastern states for the true churches of the apostolic faith. Pastor Norman formerly served as chairman of the True Churches of the Apostolic Faith Convention Planning Committee. For seven years, Pastor Norman served as the assistant pastor of the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church of Columbus, Ohio. After, after the passing of the founder, Bishop Walter A. Jones, he was installed as senior pastor on January the 14th, 2006. Prior to his call to the min preaching ministry, Pastor Norman served as transportation specialist, Sunday school teacher, youth chairman, choir director, and head drummer. In July of 2017, Pastor Norman and the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church family returned to their roots, rejoining the Pentecostal churches of the apostolic faith under the leadership of the newly elected presider, the Honorable Bishop Lambert W. Gates. Pastor Norman has been married to the love of his life, Annie L. Norman, since November the 27th, 1982, and is the father of one son, David. His motto is, the most important thing in the world to God is you. Scripture affirmation is Romans 5 and 8, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so now I introduce to you and to present to others, Pastor David Elsie Norman. Let us stand now and receive him with a hearty applause and a shout of praise unto God for the word we are about to receive. Pastor Norman, congregation, congregation, Pastor Norman. God bless you. Clap your hands another time before you're seated. Clap your hands one more time. Give God good praise. Give him good praise. How many of you are glad to be in the service one more time? I said, how many of you are glad to be in the service one more time? Come on, lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. He didn't have to let me live. So I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. I do feel the spirit of God in this house. Amen. I feel the presence of God. I want to thank you pastor and the committee that invited us for the opportunity to come and speak on a Sunday morning. It's rare for pastors to give up their pulpit on a Sunday morning. So I want to say thank you to my friend, your pastor, Pastor Marcus Bendolph. Let's give the Lord a hand clap praise for him. Amen. We honored him 
in this time of appreciation and the birthday celebration. Amen. I'm, I'm a little bit ahead of him. Amen. So I think I'm going to shave this beard off so I don't look like I'm older than him. Amen. We thank God for him. And his lovely wife, put your hands together for Lady Ben Dahl. It is good to give flowers while we live. Amen. While they can appreciate, am I right? While they can appreciate the flowers. When they're stretched out front, you can't smell the flowers. So I, I, I encourage you to celebrate them now. Amen. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't get up here after all things are shut down and we're having the celebration of life. And tell all, tell all these people the good stuff, you know. Tell it now. Right? Tell it now in the presence of the congregation. What a wonderful pastor and wonderful first lady that you all have. I think we need to put our hands together just another time. Amen. Thankful to be here. I don't know if I'm supposed to do offering or what I'm supposed to do. No? All right. Amen. So I want to thank God for my lovely wife being here with me, First Lady Annie. <laughs> And it will be 39 years, November the 27th. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for her patience with me. I'm a lot of work, so I thank God for her patience. Amen. With me, I am I'm OCD. I got a lot of problems. So I thank God for being patient. Amen. Patient with me. And my sister-in-law is here, her sister. Evangelist Elizabeth Hayes. Amen. They so graciously came down with me. And I'm trying to see y'all pray real good. I'm going to see if the Lord will bless one of them to drive back. If y'all. Yeah. How many of y'all believe in the power of prayer? How many? If y'all pray real good. These kind. Amen. Amen. And certainly we do bring our greetings from the Greater Bethlehem Temple Church in Columbus, Ohio. Well, I'm humbled to be the pastor of, I call it the greatest church on the corner. I won't say in the city. Amen. I do. I think it's one of the greatest churches in the city of Columbus. Not because I pastor, but because the anointing is resident in that church. Amen. If you ever have an opportunity to come, Come to Columbus and um, you will experience the presence of God like you feel it here. Some places you go, you'd be glad to get in and get out. Amen. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So we bring you greetings. Um, Brother Stanley, if you can give me some highs, take some of the lows out. Amen. I would really appreciate that. I. I'm always in a quandary of what to preach. I want to be a help when I leave. I want to leave something with you that I believe is going to be advantageous to you as the people of God. It's one thing to just preach. It's another thing to preach what God has given for the house. Amen. Thank you. So we want to give, give you what God has given. Uh, in the book of Matthew, this is Sunday morning. Matthew chapter 26. Thank God for the musicians and the armor bearers and all those individuals that have assisted to make this service be what it is. Amen. If you could do me a favor and move that around just so I can hear and, and this one as well. If you can just turn it this way just a little bit. Yes, sir. All right, pull it back. Yeah, there you go. That's gooder. That's much better. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 26, very familiar passage of scripture. But I believe God has a word for, for us today. Lift your right hand and say, Lord, I need a word from the Lord. 
Matthew chapter 26. Thank you, Lord. Verse uh, 36. Then cometh Jesus with them to a place called Gethsemane and said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go yonder and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Verse 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Verse 45 for expedition of the reading. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep now, take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise and let us uh, be going. Behold, he, Judas, is at hand that doth betray me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these wonderful words. And you said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. God, we thank you this morning for our rising this morning. We thank you, God, for keeping us while we slept. We thank you, God, because it is of the Lord's mercy that we were not consumed. Death hoovered over us in our beds and walked by us and down up and down the front of our houses. But God, you said not today. For that reason, God, we come into your house to give you glory, praise, and honor. We say thank you, God, for all that you've done. The unseen dangers that you protected us from. The trouble, God, that we didn't even know was around the corner. But because, God, you are omniscient and you know all things, God, the angels of the Lord encamped round about us. And, God, the trouble that should have been ours, God, you were merciful to us. And for that we say thank you. For that we give you glory. For that we give you the honor. God, before we move into this message, God, we have to give you the glory. We must recognize you, God, as the only God. God, you sit high and look low. God, there's nobody like you. Nobody can do what you've done. God, and we glorify you. God, let us not be remiss, God, in doing what you told us to do. Enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Into your courts with praise. And to be thankful. God, let us not be irresponsible and not do what you told us to do. So, God, as we come into this place, we open up our mouths and we say, thank you. We say, hallelujah. We say, glory to your name. Glory and honor belong to you. Power, glory, and honor to our God. In the name of Jesus, I feel you, God. Yea, God. Yea, God. Oh. oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Shetama. Yeah. Yes, sir. My, 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 my. Oh. How about In the name of Jesus touch my mind and my body in Jesus name amen lift your hands all over this building and say Lord I thank you come on tell him like you really appreciate him say Lord I thank you now tell him Lord this is the day that you have made I shall rejoice my, 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 my. come on clap your hands and give God good praise Come on, give him good praise before we move forward. Come on, give him good praise. Come on, give God praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. 
shall glory, shall glory. My, 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 my. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Hey, God. We got to try to go. My shit. My, 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 my shot. Woo, how about shit? Hey, God. Come on, Jesus. Whoa, God. Somebody open your mouth and just shout, Glory. Hey. How about, how about shit? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody another time shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. I'm wondering by the neighbor preachers turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's been good to me, tell. Say, you might not understand my praise. You might not understand my worship, but tell him, neighbor, God's been good to me. Tell him, I owe you my praise. I owe you my hallelujah. I owe God a thank you. Hey. I, owe him, I owe him. I owe this to him. I feel you, God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, Power! Shout, Power! Shout, Power! Power of the Holy Ghost is in here. Yes, sir! I got to hold myself together. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all, all, ah, my, 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 my. I got to preach. We got to go, y'all. We got to go. Somebody say hallelujah one more time. Yes, sir. all God done for you if you have no response or no pro response you ought to have something to say if he woke you up the since he woke you up you ought to open your mouth and tell God thank you oh. tell God thank you I said, tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. Y'all be seated. Please, please be seated. Hey. Yes, sir. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Verse 39. Let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, as I will, but as thou wilt. 
I want to talk to you, if you've not heard me speak before, I, I speak from a conceptual application place. I see the concept in the text, and I ask God to unveil it to me and show it to me so that I can preach the concept that's in the text without eisegeting the text. What I see in this text is... Um, In this chapter, I see the subject, the crushing place, a place called Gethsemane. And you'll get this in a minute. He says in verse number 39, not as I will. The will of a man is powerful. And then the will to live is even more powerful. That's, that is what makes the committing of suicide such an anomaly. You don't understand why someone would take their own life because the will of, to live is very powerful. So you don't understand when someone even thinks about it, talks to you about taking their life because life has gotten so bad. So you don't get it, right? And so we, we, we talk to them in a, in a frame of hope when despair has come so heavy and it's looming in their lives. Because we don't get it, right? And the devil will get you to a place, try to take you to a place where you want to take your own life and violate the, the, the scriptures that says, thou shall not kill. But the will to live is powerful. Um, people that have been injured, paralyzed, all kind of anomalies, they still want to, to live. The force of life. Amen. Is not abated because of the malady or the anomaly that's in the body, the trouble that's in, in our flesh. We still want to live. Nobody wants to die. Uh, Y'all sitting in here today talking about going to heaven, but don't nobody want to die. All of us are hopeful that we're going to make it in the rapture. The alive and remain, not the dead in Christ. Y'all, y'all quiet. All of us uh, believe that we're going up alive. How many believe you're going up anyway? Dead or alive, we get to go. But the will to live is powerful. The will of a man is, is a powerful force. And the will of a man must be broken. In order for God to fulfill his assignment in that individual. Preach, Norman, I'm trying to. God's will is his, his desire and his pleasure and his intent. What was God intending to do, right? Why send Jesus? What is the purpose and the motive of, of sending Jesus? And we find it in John 3, 16, 17. Uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So we begin to understand the intent and the motive of God. What motivated God to do what he did? When he really needs no motivation other than he loved his creation and the trouble of his creation, I feel like preaching y'all, the trouble of his creation without a, a, a remedy for the situation, uh, uh, he, uh, he looked for a man and he sought somebody that would make up the hedge and stand between the gap and the chasm between God and man that had been uh, uh, chasmized, if you will. He needed somebody to stand between the anger of God and the wrath of God and the judgment of God. And so he sent Jesus. The intent was that none should perish but all should come to the knowledge of the truth and so when you see and understand God's will versus a man's will God's will has a purpose and a desire what is the desire God why God have you put us in this position that, that you're and he'll tell you so that my will can be done my will must now super 
supersede your will. For you to fulfill the assignment that I gave you before the foundation of the world. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I had already anointed you. But the devil tried to mess you up. But my anointing and my purpose was greater than Satan's desire to destroy you. Because I'm greater than he is, then I, I, my mercy kept you for such a time as this. Mm. The only reason that you're living right now is because God's mercy was greater than Satan's death trap. The only reason I feel like preaching, y'all, the only reason you're living right now, because God didn't give you what you deserve. You deserve the wages or the payoff of sin, which is death. But God did not give you what you deserve. Three of y'all looking at me crazy. You thought you were smart enough to dodge the bullet. No, no, you can't move that fast. You thought you were smart enough not to catch the venereal disease that you would have for the rest of your life. That the same person, other person had it, but you didn't know that was God's. That was God's mercy because He had an assignment that you will fulfill. He had something for you to do. I feel it. He has something for you to do that was outside of the nature and scope of the plan of Satan. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I didn't come to condemn you. You were condemned already. You were condemned to death. I walked in the sound and let you walk out. I took your place. Sit down, y'all. And some of y'all, you need to give God a great celebration for taking your place. He went into the cell of death row and let you walk out a free man, free woman. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. If you know you were guilty, you said, or you can't say I didn't do it. I did do it. But the mercy of God, I did lie. But the mercy of God, I did steal. But the mercy of God, I did rob. But the mercy, God's mercy, morning by morning, new mercy, now fainting not. I'm trying not to go there too fast, y'all. Sit down, y'all trying to make me think I'm preaching. Sit down, y'all. So the intent of God and the will of God are synonymous with what God plans to do. The motive of God. Why, God, do you do what you do? Good God Almighty. I love y'all. That's what he said. I love you. I made you and created you. I love you. Good God, I made you in my image and in my likeness. I loved you. And I'm coming back to get that which was lost in Adam. I'm coming back to get my own possession and bring you back to myself. I'm coming back to get the damaged stuff that was lost in Adam. And I'm coming to repossess that which is mine. Lift your hand and tell the devil, I belong to Jesus. Tell, tell the devil, I'm under new management. Yeah, what you meant for evil, God is going to turn it for my good. Yeah. Open your mouth and shout glory. 
<laughs> the intent of God <laughs> moves God <laughs> into his purpose. <laughs> Destiny is <laughs> the way to get to <laughs> your assigned purpose. <laughs> Destiny is not your <laughs> destination, <laughs> but Destiny is the road <laughs> and the way that I take. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the steps of a good man. <laughs> I feel like preaching, y'all. <laughs> Honored by the Lord, He knows the way that I take, and when I'm tried, I shall come forth as pure God. I'm not there yet; He's still working on me. Tell your neighbor, say, "Oh, neighbor, don't get weary now. He's still working on me. Don't get mad when you see me slip up. He's still." working. Don't get angry. He's still working on my mind. Still working on my spirit. Yeah. Yes. But when God gets through with me. Hallelujah. So the intent of God moves us into the motivation. Yahweh Shabbat had an old church. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, when God saved you, he was motivated. When he kept you, you were his motivation. Yes, if you were the only person on the planet, he would have shut down heaven and hell just to save you. He would have shed the same blood on the cross just to save you. He was motivated not to let Satan win. Tell the devil, say, devil, you thought you had me, but I got away. You thought you had my mind, but I got away. You thought you had my spirit, but I got away. Look at me now. Behold, a new creature. Former things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Clap your hands and give God praise. So, everybody is talking, ladies and gentlemen, about going to the next level. How do you get there? And I heard the scripture say, except the grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. The only way to go to the next level is I got to get rid of you. The only way to go to the next place, can I tell you, is to get rid of your will. Your will now has to be broken. Your will has to be undermined. Your will has to be destroyed so that God can use you for his glory. How many of y'all here have an understanding that while you were sinning, your will had predominance. It had precedence. You almost drunk yourself into cirrhosis of the liver. You almost smoked until you had cancer in your lungs. You almost were so promiscuous till you almost caught something that you couldn't get rid to remind you every month that I'm still here. It's quiet because some of y'all got the Holy Ghost, but every month. All right, that's too heavy for y'all. Let me give y'all some good stuff. Everybody's talking about going to the next level. But the only way to go to the next place in God is you got to die. Your will has 
has to be broken. The only way to move up is to go down. Humble yourself under the mighty hand. Can I give you a Bible? The mighty hand of God. And he shall exalt you in due time. Hold on, organist. We ain't quite there yet. I'm just setting the foundation. Good God Almighty. So here it is with Jesus. Time and opportunity and now shake hands in Jesus' life. He's on his way to fulfill his assignment. He just sat down with his disciples and broke bread. We call it the Last Supper. And he broke bread with them. And while they were there, he began to say, One of you shall betray me. And all of them said, Hey, God is an eye. And I'm looking in the room right now. You here this morning. But one of y'all going to betray him because of the pressure of society. You're going to compromise for 30 pieces of silver. You're going to trade the eternal for a temporary situation. You're going to trade what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard for a few minutes of pleasure. The pleasure of seeing for a season. It costs too much. Tell your neighbor, say, oh neighbor, what you thinking about doing is going to cost you too much. That idea in your mind is going to cost you too much. Don't exchange the eternal for the temporary. A few minutes of pleasure. 18 years of grief. Y'all miss that. Don't exchange what God has for you. Good God Almighty. God told me to tell you your blessing is on the table. It's right around the corner. Just a few more weary days and I got your blessing. I already got it. I got your husband. He's standing on the corner with a brown paper bag in his hand and I'm working on it. I got your wife. She's twerking right now but I got her and I'm working on her. Don't get weary in well doing. Turn to your neighbor and say, oh neighbor, God is working on your blessing. He knows the thoughts that he thinks about you. Now I ain't saying nothing in here. Encourage somebody and tell them God is working on your blessing. So Jesus is wrestling with humanity and glory in the same body. Humanity wants to live, but the glory that was there before the foundation of the world. Father, give me back the glory that I had with you before the foundation of the world. Yes, but truly the spirit is willing but this flesh is weak. So he goes and he takes Jesus to the garden of Gethsemane. The word Gethsemane means the crushing place. Yes, Finally, I kept you for three years. Jesus, now this flesh that I rolled you in, I got to crush it and get rid of it. Who am I preaching to? 
God told me to tell somebody you cried because the spirit is willing but your flesh don't want to let go you don't want to call stop calling Tyrone you don't want to put down the whiskey bottle but I assign you before the foundation of the world and you will fulfill my assignment I'm going to crush you until you there's no more you left I'm going to squeeze you until I get everything out of you that's not like me so how can you continue to kick against the pricks you can't fight what I told you to do you can't wrestle against what I had already declared from the foundation of the world I need three of y'all to throw your hand up and say Lord I surrender thumb up and say Lord Lord, I surrender all to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I freely give. Lift your hands and say, Lord, work on me until you work all this flesh out of me. Work on me until you get rid of David. Work on me until you get rid of Marcus. Work on me until you get rid of Stan. Work until I say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Open your mouth and shout glory. I'm almost finished, y'all. I'm trying to help somebody. Y'all help me to help me preach. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's just crushing you. Tell me he's squeezing you. Tell me he's working on you. Yeah. So that you can be a vessel of honor. He's fit for the master's use. He's squeezing all of that sin nature out of you. Squeezing arrogance, pride out of you. Squeezing and it don't feel good, but it's going to do you good. Yes, sir. It's going to do you good when God get done with you. You'll be ready to say, not my will, but thy will be done. I gotta go, y'all. So he takes him to the crushing place. And now let me switch up. Because in order to get what God wants, he's got to crush his creation to get from it what he put in it before it was made in the earth. You were already chosen in him before the foundation. Foundation, this is too heavy for y'all. Before the foundation of the world, but I got to squeeze you now because I'm after the oil. I'm after the anointing. So he takes him to the mountain, the Mount of Olives, where the olives are, to give us a picture of what God does to get to the anointing. Each olive must first be collected. It is collected and then it's taken to the place called the crushing place. Inside of the olive are the things that God wants. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, he's after the oil. The olive you see is made up of the epicorp, epi meaning on the outside, the mesiocorp in the inside, and the endocorp, which represent the body, mind, in the spirit the trichotomy of man the trichotomy of what God made tell your neighbor say neighbor he wants all of you and he wants to synchronize the three bring the three together preach Norman I'm trying to preach somebody say preach pastor 
<laughs> I think a wheel. <laughs> and he said, I'm squeezing <laughs> all three of these together <laughs> so that I can get <laughs> to the anointing. <laughs> you see, the olive <laughs> is made up of those three components. <laughs> but the oil <laughs> is resonated <laughs> in the mesial corp. <laughs> but in order to get to the mesial corp, <laughs> he has to squeeze <laughs> the olive so he takes it to the place called Gethsemane the crushing place y'all ain't helping me in here say neighbor he's after the oil yeah that's why you feel like you do cause he's after the oil the anointing that will destroy yokes he's after the oil the anointing that will undo heavy burdens he's after the oil. The anointing that will open up door. He's after the oil. The anointing that will open up blinded eyes. He's after the oil. He got to get rid of you. God told me to tell you when I get done with you you will no longer look like what you were. When I get finished squeezing you you will no longer think like you used to think. When I get done with you because I'm after the anointing I'm after the assignment to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover I'm after the oil that calls out devils I'm after the oil that calls those mentally disturbed that anointing that brings the mind back to a place of wholeness what I put in you I got to squeeze you so you can do my will so, so the olives are upon Mount Gethsemane Mount Olivet where they collect the oil or the, the olive is collected and each one must be selected I don't messed up stuff I want the olive that can produce the most to much who have been forgiven much they also have a greater amount of worship and praise some of y'all sitting in here today you acting like God didn't forgive you much but the more he forgave you the higher your praise ought to be the louder Yo, hallelujah. Anybody in here who God forgave much, throw your head back, shall glory. Shall glory another time. No, no. That was a baby glory. Throw your head back and shake it. Glory. Glory. Tell God glory and honor belongs to him. Shout glory. Shout glory. Yeah. Good God Almighty. And so he says, I'm going to use, but I got to crush you. I got to bring you to Gethsemane where I can finally be rid of you. I'm tired of your confessions. I'm tired of you coming to the altar. I'm tired of you in the pastor's office. I got to get rid of you. I anointed you and I chose you to be a prophet down here. And you keep going back to that which I delivered you from. Good God of preach, Norman. Good God of mighty. Lift your right hand and say, Today my deliverance has come. No more I, but the Christ that's in me. 
<laughs> and so <laughs> he collects the olives <laughs> and they take them <laughs> to the place where the grinding <laughs> takes place <laughs> and they take a huge stone <laughs> and put them <laughs> on the ground <laughs> and the stone <laughs> begins to roll over them <laughs> and roll over <laughs> and begins to squeeze <laughs> the essence of <laughs> the anointing <laughs> out of them because he's after the oil he squeezes the inside until every drop of the anointing is squeezed out of the olive until he gets what he wants God told me to tell you I'm going to squeeze you and I'm going to squeeze you and I'm going to squeeze you until I get what I want out of you that's what Jesus is y'all the assignment that he made for Jesus has to come to pass look at your neighbor and say oh neighbor your assignment has tell him to come to pass this time grab your left ear like a preacher say oh neighbor your assignment has has to come to pass so he squeezes and puts under a lot of pressure until the flesh no longer you won't wear Daisy Dukes no more you won't put on pants sagging down around your thigh no more you're gonna pull off the earrings not not the women y'all brothers you think because you old like me the blue hair on the side the top won't grow ponytail in the back uh, with the earring on at the club saying them old stairs of lines girl you must be tired you've been walking through my mind all night y'all not saying nothing with them old tight lines go sit your old self somebody say preach pastor y'all sisters know I'm telling it right oh can't do nothing oh thank you go sit down and leave people alone come on and get and get yourself together to do the will of God yes sir so he squeezes and he squeezes and he squeezes I'm under great pressure why so Jesus goes and prays one two three three times mind body soul until the three become unified and synchronized for the purpose of God he prays in the spirit realm he prays in the earthly realm he prays in the mind until he synchronizes the three these three are one one Lord one faith one baptism one God above all in all and through all until the three in one are synchronized to do the will of God look at your neighbor say neighbor you can pray through Three times now throw your hands up and give up and say not my will but thine. I feel like preaching in here y'all and so he works on the olive until Jesus finally said well 
hearts uh, for this end uh, was I born uh, for this reason uh, was I called uh, into the world uh, sacrifice uh, and offering uh, thou wouldest not uh, but a body uh, thou had prepared uh, for me uh, for the suffering uh, of death uh, here I am uh, yes God I need three of y'all to jump to your feet and say, here I am. I present my body a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God. Here I am. Use my hands. Use my feet. Use my voice. Use all of me. Somebody shout glory. is the crushing place. Be seated. Where he finally crushes you to get to the anointing. I have to squeeze all of you out. Let me tell you. Organist, when, 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 when he's done with the olive, the olive is crushed and it no longer resembles what it used to look like. Y'all missed that. It's squeezed until the olive itself no longer looks like what it used to look like. That's some of our problem. We're trying to be what God brought us from. Trying to hold on to that which he has delivered us out of. Trying to be the roundaway girl. That ain't who you are no more. You are the royal priesthood, the holy nation. You are the people that are called according to his word. He's after the oil. I'm to, who am I talking to today? Somebody here today, he's crushing you. You didn't get it. You didn't understand. He said, no, I ain't going to let up either. I'm not going to let the pressure up until I get the anointing. Until I get from you that which I designed you to do. I'm not going to let up the pressure. I should kill you, but I'm not going to kill you because I need you. I'm after the oil this inside but I gotta crush this flesh lift your hand and say Lord work on me come on tell him Lord work on me tell him no tell him loud say Lord work on me I'm trying to leave you alone but some of y'all going through hell on earth you don't understand why you are where you are. I've been saved for 10 years. And I thought it was going to get better. He said, no, it's only going to get better when you give up. It's only going to change when you throw your hands up and say, Lord, I'm surrender. Yeah. What I put in you, there are people that you must reach that can't nobody else reach but you. And until I squeeze the essence of my oil out of you, you'll never reach those people. He's after the oil. So he takes you to the crushing place. Takes you to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he crushes you. Until you finally say, there's no more I. Lord, not my will, but thy. Your will be done. Use me, Lord, in your service. That's what this is. I, I, can I tell y'all, I never looked at it like this until I read the text, the context of the text, and the concept that I see in the text that he was, he was after the oil. But in order for Jesus to fulfill his assignment, he had to squeeze Jesus until Jesus said, not my will. This flesh. 
that don't want to die. This robe of flesh, but it's got to die. Can I tell us, uh, our problem is in the church, we won't die. Y'all quiet. We still, we still snapping and rolling. And I'm still trying to figure out what y'all sisters grabbing. We still snapping, rolling, and grabbing. You don't know me. I don't need to know you. Henceforth, no we, no man. Y'all quiet. You don't know me. I ain't supposed to know you. You're supposed to have been up on the mountain of Gethsemane, the oil press. He's supposed to have squeezed all that snapping, rolling, and grabbing out of you. Y'all not saying nothing. Are we all right? That's what Jesus had to go through. So you hear him praying, Father, glorify me with thy own self. Give me back the glory I had with you before the foundation of the world was. He had already prayed that, but he had not gone through the process of being crushed. You see, it's one thing to pray it. Then it's another thing to go through the process. <clears throat> the glory. Jesus understood that there was glory on the other side of the cross. If I can just get through this time on the other side of the cross there's glory I get to go back to where I was before the foundation of the world I hope this is not too much I feel like treating so y'all can get it he's after the oil so he takes you to the crushing place and some of y'all right now indicting God and God don't love me yes he does that's his love squeezing you. I ain't know God was going to be like, yes, that's just how he is. Until I get you to where I need you to be. I can't use you like you are. Not for what I need. I need somebody to die on the cross. I can't use you like this. I can't use you like, like this. So I've got to crush you. I hope I'm helping about three of y'all. About three of y'all that's been going three, four, five of y'all. Been going through stuff and you didn't know why you was going through it. And it seemed like that he wasn't going to let up off of you. He's not going to let up. Till he gets from you that which he put in you. He's not going to change. You have to change. We have to Change. Behold, a new creation. The former things passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm going to quit. I got tons of stuff I can share with you, but I want you to get the essence of this message. He takes you, he takes Jesus up to the Mount uh, of Olives, the crushing place. Read, look it up. Uh, Y'all fact check preachers today. Look it up on your phone. Gethsemane means the place of crushing. It's a beautiful place with ugly consequences. And he takes you into this beautiful place. Brings you into the house of God. And you're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then he crushes you. So that you can be used for his service. Somebody here today, you're wondering why. Why? Why am I going through this? I've been going through this. For a long time. Yes, yes. You know why you prolong in the process? Until you say, not my will. Until, until the three parts of you are synchronized to do the will of God. Somebody today, if I'm out of order, somebody tell me. Y'all know God didn't send, he sent this word for somebody. You thought you were struggling. You are. You are struggling, but you're fighting against something that you can't win. Jesus had to finally say, not my will, but your, Lord, your will be done. Somebody today, you need to come down to this altar. I feel the Holy Ghost. He's going to bless you. This is going to be your last time you have to go through that thing you've been dealing with. 
because you're going to finally say, okay, God, I, I quit. I quit. I quit. I throw in the towel. I give up. God, I give up. I didn't understand it, God. I didn't get it. I didn't know why I felt like I was under consistent pressure. The stone, it will crush you to powder. Somebody come. Somebody else come. Somebody come. I come today to be a help to this church. And I want to tell you, you will fulfill your assignment. If you want the pressure to let up off of you, turn down a little bit. If you want the pressure to let up off of you, then you have to throw your hands up and say, not my will. If you want that addiction to be broken, you have to say, Lord, not my will. Can I tell you, your flesh will kill you. Yes, it will. It'll help you commit suicide and you don't even know you're killing yourself. Help you drink until you have cirrhosis of the liver. And you won't even know that you're killing yourself. But the assignment that God has given. I don't want anybody to be offended. I need to say, I need to say this. I don't know anything about this church. Right? I don't. But coming to this altar every Sunday, the same person, and not allowing God to break your will is a waste of time. You can't just be saved on Sunday. I need to help about three of y'all. De the devil is trying to kill you before the next Sunday come. Bishop, who am I talking to? He's trying to kill you before. And I ain't no prophet. I just know what God tell me in my spirit. He's trying to kill you between Sundays. He's trying to kill you before you can get back to this altar. And you're playing Russian roulette. With where you'll spend eternity. As the tree falleth. That's the way it lies. And then you said the preacher preaching you into heaven. And God already sent you to hell. Y'all not saying that. And we preachers got to stop going up here preaching these people into heaven. And I see him standing at the gate. And I see him. Walking on the street. Y'all didn't think I could do that, did you? Walking on the streets of gold. And you have forfeited your right. I'm talking right today. That addiction that you have, that don't, nobody know about. You keep coming up here every Sunday. Where are you? Every Sunday I come up here. And when I leave, I'm the same person I was. Victory is not victory if it's only momentary. How you doing, baby? If it's only momentary, that's not real victory. We're in overtime now. The game continues. When you leave here today, the game continues. The battle continues. You are, we are at war for where our souls will spend eternity. Right? Can I teach for about two seconds? Where you spend eternity will determine what you do in your flesh. Uh, Bishop, I, I, I used to kind of think that he wasn't trying to save your flesh. 
But he said, that your body, spirit, and your soul presented, be presented blameless. Yeah. Blew my mind. I was like, huh? I done read that Bible for years. Yo, the whole totality of the triunity of you must be uh, kept blameless. You can't sin in your body and think it don't affect your soul. It's called the fool's gamble. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. What do you mean, pastor? That means that, hey, baby, that means that, uh, uh, he said that, that your actions precipitate that you, don't, you say there's no God. You don't even have to say it with your mouth, but in your heart, your actions then show that I really don't believe there's a God and there's a consequences for my sins. I don't believe that there really is a heaven or hell because my actions show that I don't believe. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he can do it. That he can get you off drugs. That he can make ways out of no way. That he can heal, heal your body. He must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you diligently seek he will reward you with health and strength. But you must first believe that he is. You must first believe, thank you. You must first believe that he is. Back up just a little bit. Lift your hands, daughter. Lift your hands. I'm trying not to say some stuff. Ha cable shot Mama ha shete. Yes God. Yes God. Yes God. Jesus name Satan the Lord God rebuke you take your hands off of this property this is God's property it's under new management I rebuke you in the name of Jesus you have no power yes sir you will do God's will God God crush Crush this olive till the essence of you comes out in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Jesus' name. By the power vested in me, the authority of the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost, I command that you are free in the name of Jesus. He who the Son sets free. Look for it. Look to be free. Walk free. Talk free. Live free. Yeah, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Break every fetter, every chain. Next Sunday, God. Next Sunday. New creature. Next Sunday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to crush you until I get until I get out of you what I want. Look at me. Look at me. Open your eyes. Lift your hands. I only want you to say this if you mean it. Lift them up high like you want them to pick you up. Like you want And say, Lord, I surrender. No, no, no. Don't be scared. This is your day. You hear me? He sent me all the way to Columbus. If for nobody else. 
Say, Lord, crush everything in me. Crush everything Not like in you in the name of Jesus. After the Holy Ghost come, you shall receive power. Now tell yourself, I got power. You got the Holy Ghost. Tell yourself, I got power. Come on, baby.
need a praying church. How many of y'all can pray? Anybody else I'm praying for? Anybody else? I hope you got the message. He got you under pressure for a reason. Lady Bendoff, he wants to destroy all of you. Not you, but all of that. Somebody say it real quick. He's after the oil. Say it real quick. He's after the oil. The anointing. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke. He's after the oil. You can't fulfill your assignment without the power. Am I making sense, Bishop? See, when you lift your hands, that means I surrender. When your arms is crossed, that means you're closed and you're not ready to receive. But if you lift your hands, 